Hi, this is Liji from the Napaka product management team, and I'd like to give you a quick tour of our Kubernetes data protection solution using Veritas Napaka. I touched on three points over here on the slide, unified, application-centric, and self-service. Let's touch on self-service. As an existing NetBackup user or a brand new administrator, it's very easy to onboard a Kubernetes admin into NetBackup. Let's go under RBAC, under security, and you have some default roles. The default Kubernetes administrator role. Let's go in here and add the Kubernetes administrator's username. It's a system level user. So we're going to go and add them here, and that sets them up for self-service. Next, let me go and log in as the Kubernetes admin. So now I'm going to log in to the backup using a private browser window, but keeping the administrator's view in the background. As soon as you log in, you'll see the Kubernetes administrator has a very focused view when it comes to the Kubernetes workloads that he's going to manage, the protection plans to which they will back up, as well as the storage configurations that make up those plans, and then credential management. You want to be able to add Kubernetes clusters and store their credentials. You can also create additional Kubernetes users by copying one of these templates and scaling down the permissions they have. So let's go into Kubernetes and add under workloads, Kubernetes, and add a cluster in. So you need to have this cluster information from your Kubernetes admin. And go in here, click on the Add button. Have the cluster name, the port number. The controller namespace is Valero, which is where the NetBackup Kubernetes operator is deployed. We will choose an existing credential. We have a credential already stored here. So there's k plus 2 And Click Next, and it validates the credentials, communicates with the cluster. And once that's successful, NetBackup will start the discovery of the Kubernetes namespaces that are configured on this cluster. So you'll see over here that the discovery job has started. It'll take a few minutes. I know there's about 800 to 1,000 namespaces that are defined on this node. So it'll take a few minutes. Let's go inside and take a look at all the namespaces that are discovered on this cluster. The discovery is still running, but it starts populating the assets, the namespace assets as we find it. As part of this discovery, it is also discovering the application-centric view of the Kubernetes native resources that make up the namespace as well, and cataloging them. So let's go take a look at some of these. So discovery is complete. Let's go take a look at some of these namespaces. So go under namespaces. I know of a Tanzu named user namespace. So let's search for namespaces. There's a bunch of them that are named with Tanzu in it. So let's go and let's take this one with the PV, persistent volume. Under resources, you can see the entire application centric view that we have for this namespace. So let's go and take a backup of this one. So let's see. Nginx tens alternate. Let's go and highlight that. You can click on backup now, or you can click add protection. Let's do a backup now. So here is a snapshot storage job, test Tanzu, and go ahead and kick off a backup. That's how easy it is to go and get to your data protection workflows going with Kubernetes. Let's also take a look at the recovery experience. So let's take a look at that Tanzu namespace that we just backed up. It says Tanzu alternate, there we go. And if you go under recovery points, there's a recovery point that corresponds to our backup. And here's all the application-centric view of all the individual Kubernetes resources. Now there's a couple of options that we have in our store. You can restore the entire namespace, or you can restore the persistent volumes. Let's take a look at restore persistent volumes. By default, it'll show you the target cluster as the source one from where it was backed up. So you can have the option of sending it to an alternate cluster. And you have another couple of options as well, whether you want to use the original namespace or a system-generated temporary namespace. You can also overwrite it. This feature is not available right now when it's coming from vSphere storage. 
Let's take a look at the other option, which is to restore the namespace. For restore namespace, also, we have the same choices of choosing the cluster. We'll just use the default. And the options are, you can use the original and alternate namespace and the option to overwrite. If you choose an alternate, you have the ability to enter a namespace, which will be used for restore purposes. When it comes to recovery, the resource types, you can restore all, recover all the resources in the namespace, or you can selectively choose to recover just a few of them. So that gives you a level of flexibility. I do want to touch on a couple more settings. In so Kubernetes up top, you have resource throttling as well as discovery. So resource limits lets you define how many parallel jobs you want to run at a per Kubernetes cluster layer. And the other one with auto discovery, it specifies the interval at which you want the namespaces to be discovered across each of the clusters. The download for this plugin is available off the download center, Veritas Download Center, and it's the backup Kops 9.1. It's a targz file that contains both the Helm chart used to deploy and the Docker image for the backup Kubernetes operator. That wraps up our quick overview. I think there's a lot more to cover. Thank you for spending some time and learning about our Kubernetes data protection options.